There is Scottish Episcopal Cathedral in Edinburgh. This afternoon, the canticles are sung to settings by Bernard Rose. God is love, and he that abideth in love abideth in God, and God in him. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. We confess to God Almighty. We confess to God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, through our own grievous fault. Wherefore we pray God to have mercy upon us. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us all our sins and deliver us from evil. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. May the almighty and merciful Lord grant unto you pardon and remission of all your sins, time for true repentance, amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips. O God, make speed to save us.
first lesson is written in the fourth chapter of the book Ecclesiastes, beginning at the first verse. I come again to contemplate all the oppression that is committed under the sun. Take, for instance, the tears of the oppressed, with no one to protect them, the power their oppressors wield, no one to protect them. So rather than the living who still have lives to live, I salute the dead who have already met death. Happier than both of these is he who is yet unborn and has not seen the evil things that are done under the sun. I see that all effort and all achievement spring from men's mutual jealousy. This too is vanity and chasing of the wind. The fool folds his arms and eats his own flesh away. Better one handful of repose than two hands full of effort in chasing the wind. And I observe another vanity under the sun. A man is quite alone, no son, no brother, and yet there is no end to his efforts. His eyes can never have their fill of riches. For whom then do I work so hard and grudge myself pleasure? This too is vanity, a sorry business. Better two than one by himself, since thus their work is really profitable. If one should fall, the other helps him up. But woe to the man by himself, with no one to help him up when he falls down. Again, they keep warm, who sleep two together. But how can a man keep warm alone? Where one alone would be overcome, two will put up resistance, and a threefold cord is not quickly broken. Better a lad beggarly yet wise than a king old yet foolish who will no longer take advice. The lad may well step from prison to the throne or have been born a beggar in the kingdom he now owns. I observe that all who live and move under the sun side with that lad, the usurper who has succeeded. He takes his place at the head of innumerable subjects, sad if later no one has cause to be glad of him. This too most certainly is vanity and chasing of the wind. When you go to the temple, be on your guard. Go near so that you can hear. The sacrifice is more valuable than the offering of fools, even if they are unaware of doing wrong. Here ends the sec first lesson.
The second lesson is written in the 24th chapter of the Acts of the Apostles, beginning at the first verse. Five days later, the high priest Ananias came down with some of the elders and an advocate named Tertullus, and they laid information against Paul before the governor. Paul was called, and Tertullus opened for the prosecution. Your Excellency Felix, the unbroken peace we enjoy and the reforms this nation owes to your foresight are matters we accept always and everywhere with all gratitude. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I beg you to give us a brief hearing. The plain truth is that we find this man a perfect pest. He stirs up trouble among Jews the world over and is a ringleader of the Nazarene sect. He has even attempted to profane the temple. We placed him under arrest intending to judge him according to our law, but the tribune Lysias intervened and took him out of our hands by force, ordering his accusers to appear before you. If you ask him, you can find out for yourself the truth of all our accusations against this man. The Jews supported him, asserting that these were the facts. When the governor motioned him to speak, Paul answered, I know that you have administered justice over this nation for many years, and I can therefore speak with confidence in my defense. As you can verify for yourself, it is no more than 12 days since I went up to Jerusalem on pilgrimage. And it's not true that they ever found me arguing with anyone or stirring up the mob, either in the temple, in the synagogues, or about the town. Neither can they prove any of the accusations they are making against me now. What I do admit to is this. It's according to the way which they describe as a sect that I worship the God of my ancestors, retaining my belief in all points of the law and in what is written in the prophets. And I hold the same hope in God as they do, that there will be a resurrection of good men and bad men alike. In these things, I, as much as they, do my best to keep a clear conscience at all times before God and man. After several years, I came to bring alms to my nation and to make offerings. It was in connection with these that they found me in the temple. I'd been purified, and there was no crowd involved and no disturbance. But some Jews from Asia, these are the ones who should have appeared before you and accused me of whatever they had against me. At least let those who are present say what crime they found me guilty of when I stood before the Sanhedrin unless it were to do with this single outburst when I stood up among them and called out, it's about the resurrection of the dead that I'm on trial before you today. At this, Felix, who knew more about the way than most people, adjourned the case, saying, when Lysias the tribune has come down, I'll go into your case. He then gave orders for the centurion that Paul should be kept under arrest, but free from restriction and that none of his own people should be prevented from seeing to his needs. Here ends the second lesson.
I believe in God. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into hell and sit upon the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord of mercy, upon us, cross the path of mercy, upon us, Lord of mercy, mercy, upon us. thy mercy upon us. And grant us the O Lord, save the Queen. Ministers with righteousness. And make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people. Let us pray. Stir up, we beseech thee, O Lord, the wills of thy faithful people, that they, plenteously bringing forth the fruit of good works, may of thee be plenteously rewarded through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O 
God, from whom all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works do proceed, give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our hearts may be set to obey thy commandments, and also that by thee we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness, and through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour. <coughs> Light in our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night, for the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ.
Let us pray. First, for the Church in Scotland and in the world, and for a better understanding of our task. O God, our Shepherd, give to the Church a new vision and charity, new wisdom and fresh understanding, the revival of her brightness, and the renewal of her unity, that the eternal message of thy Son, undefiled by the traditions of men, may be hailed as the good news of the new age, through him who maketh all things new, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray for our Queen and our country, for a greater concern for justice and for the health of the nation's soul. O God, Almighty Father, King of kings and Lord of lords, grant that the hearts and minds of all who go out as leaders before us statesmen, judges, men of learning and men of influence, may be so filled with the love of thy laws and of that which is righteous and life-giving, that they may be worthy stewards of thy good and perfect gifts. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we pray for a growing spirit of compassion for all, for our neighbors, near or far. We bring before thee, O Lord, the troubles and perils of peoples and nations, the sighing of prisoners and captives, the sorrows of the bereaved, the necessities of strangers, the helplessness of the weak, the despondency of the weary, the failing powers of the aged. O Lord, be with them for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with us all evermore. Amen.
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. This week's choral evensong was broadcast from St Mary's Scottish Episcopal Cathedral at Edinburgh, where the choir was directed by Dennis Townhill, and from which church next week's choral evensong also comes.